Love it or hate it, we are reaching a point where game studios are looking to mimic the success of Telltale Games and bring a gaming experience in small chunks for $5 each per episode. The employees at Don't Not Entertainment and publisher Square Enix are looking to have the same success with the episodic series Life is Strange. Don't Not Entertainment is the studio that also produced the 2013 Remember Me. And despite what many critics and gamers may have thought about the quality of that game, it did have a feature that had the player rewind and fast forward in some of its puzzles, and that has obviously been carried over into Life is Strange. Set in a small town in Oregon, the story is centered on the character of Maxine, a shy photography student that has recently came back to her hometown after a five-year absence. Quickly after witnessing a murder by another student, Max finds that she can rewind time, allowing her to keep the shooting from happening. Through circumstance, she finds her old friend Chloe, and they start to embark on trying to find a local girl who has gone missing. Played from a third-person point of view, there is also a choice system in the game that, unsurprisingly, follows you throughout the game for the long term and short term. Unlike other games that use this mechanic, the player can rewind time to make another choice other than the original one the player made, thus allowing the player to see what another outcome would be. While this is an interesting touch, it gives us other perspectives to the story, which can feel like a cheat of sorts. It should be said that sometimes one choice is not necessarily any better than the other. Another choice can have just as much of a negative effect, it's just deciding what you can live with. As gamers, we have been told before from other series of this caliber that the choices we make in these games have a long-term effect. But some would argue that no matter what, the ending will stay the same by the last episode, and the journey is the thing that simply changes a bit. I hope the developers at Don't Not realize this and make it a point to stand out, but as of right now, we just have to play the waiting game. The time mechanic is used for more than just simply changing your choices. In the game, there are certain obstacles that you will need your ability for, like making sure certain things don't fall over, dodging falling rocks, and so on. Using this ability is not hard, and figuring out what to do in order to get past an object is not all that challenging. In most cases, I would find this to be a fault, but I can't be too negative at this point since it's still only the first episode. What was challenging, however, was working the camera as you move throughout the environments. The camera movements are very unintuitive, especially in closed quarters like a bathroom or a dormitory. Most of this game depends on finding certain objects so you can progress through the story, and some of those objects are hidden, and to find them requires the camera to be angled a certain way. This will also be obnoxious to those that want to see everything, as slight movements will keep you from interaction menus. The original controller settings may be strange for some, but fortunately, you can change the access in the options menu. Most of the characters you interact with are probably the low point of this game, as the writers apparently just researched every teen drama and MTV-produced television show on right now, and slapped it together. The shy one, the fat one, the jock, the mean one, the popular one, the principal, the freak, the rich kid, the boy that has a crush on you but you don't realize it, and so on. What makes it worse is that the dialogue is reduced to cliches, to gossiping, to profanity-ridden temper tantrums. The one character, and probably the only one that matters, that I felt anything for was Max, as most of the game seemed to consist of her trying not to irritate others and just wanting to fit in for the most part. Also, with all the throwbacks to pop culture in this game, like Red Rum and Polaroids, it seems like this game was made by 30-year-olds trying to understand how to write kids now. Life is Strange has certain points in the game where you're given an option to take pictures with your old Polaroid camera, which essentially gives you achievements or trophies, but also ties into Max's character as photography is her main interest in what she's studying in school. However, when you look at pictures and posters on the walls in the game, they are nothing more than just blobs of paint. For a game and story that centralizes its main protagonist as a kind of artist, it seems strange that the art in the game is so dull. I would like to think that there's some kind of irony to it, but so far I haven't, I haven't seen any. Life is Strange is a very pretty game in terms of its outside environments and its use of light and shadows. The character models are fine for this sort of game, even if the clothes they wear seem a bit blocky. But when you look over the horizon and, or even at the clouds, it takes you to what would only assume that Oregon is like. In a game where the people that inhabit it are in a bad way, the atmosphere helps it from going completely dark, and kudos for the studio for that. Another thing that's seen backwards is its use of technology in the game in terms of devices the characters use. What I mean by that is that the characters and surroundings all make mention of up-to-date tech in terms of hardware, social media, internet memes, or even the lingo younger people use for texting. What threw me were the main characters' use of Polaroid cameras and the use of Chloe's hi-fi system in her bedroom. 
this is an interesting choice to use those throwbacks. And while I can't really confirm it at this point, I feel that this is some kind of allegory telling us that the ones who don't have a lot find the good and older things and enjoy the small things in life, while the people with money that can afford the new tech are missing out on life as their tech consumes them. I could be wrong, though. I'm also torn on the music that's used in this game. When a song starts off, I'm getting into the melody of it a lot, but when the performer starts to sing, I cringe a little. Not by their voice, but by the juvenile lyrics that's coming out of their mouths. I hope in the future that the score is not as reliant on original songs with lyrics as the melody can sell the scene by itself. This review may come off as being a little nitpicky, and that's not necessarily the intent. The fact of the matter is, is that this game doesn't appear to cater to me or others around my age range. Life is Strange seems to be catered to a younger generation of gamer, with the use of its dialogue and new trendy looks that most of the characters sport. This game is not bad in any way, it's just not a story made for me. I wanted this game to be a bold new direction in the episodic game genre to give companies like Telltale a run for their money, but as of right now, this doesn't seem to be it. When it comes down to it, Life is Strange has an interesting enough premise going for it, but the first episode seems to come off as a 2-3 to three hour tutorial on how the game works and doesn't offer the player any real reason to get attached to the characters or plot to want to continue the second episode. Of course, that's not to say that the second episode won't be great, but the real question is if the first episode was enough for you to come back for more. I give Life is Strange Episode 1 a 3 out of 5 stars. Get more of your gaming and movie reviews at HighScoreReviews.com and follow me on Twitch and Twitter at BWDull.